So yesterday, Team Xbox had their big gameplay reveal event for the Series X, finally giving players a look at what the future of gaming is going to look like on next-gen hardware, and uh, didn't go so well. At the time of this recording, the video on Xbox's official channel sits at 17,000 upvotes and 22,000 downvotes. So uh, what went wrong? Well, let's talk about it. Now, full disclosure, I actually liked the presentation. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that uh, I typically watch these inside Xbox shows and they are often terrible. I can't actually think if there's been like a, a really good one ever. They're always packed with so much talking, awkward banter and filler and very little in terms of gameplay and reveals. So my expectations for these shows are astronomically low. If you also typically watch inside Xbox, I don't think you can argue that this wasn't a huge step up from the norm, as at least games were the focus. Uh, I know we're asking the bare minimum, and much of it was uh, world premieres, you know, stuff people haven't seen before. Uh, and there was a good variety of titles shown. We got shooters, uh, this space pilot game that looked like it could scratch my Star Fox itch, uh, one of the audiences that Xbox has long been criticized for not giving enough attention to is uh, the Weebs. Their catalog has been highly lacking in the Japanese game department, which they've lately been trying to rectify, and we saw some of that here with looks at uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon, uh, and the Scarlet Nexus game from Bandai was like an anime action game, looked really good, uh, I'm really interested in that one. So, okay, so why did most people hate this thing so much? Well, the obvious issue many had was that this showcase was billed as the Series X gameplay reveal. Gameplay was even in the title of the stream. And while there definitely was gameplay, there wasn't much of it. For one, many of these trailers were still very cinematic, with the gameplay bits quickly sort of spliced in, and people tuned in assuming that was actually going to be the main focus. And while that was an issue, I don't actually think the lack of gameplay was necessarily the main problem here even though that is what many seem to claim. I think if all these trailers were, say, you know, instead like five minutes or so of just all gameplay, but they were of the same games, I still don't think this would have gone over very well. Uh, while there were games here that I'm interested in, uh, even ones that I've been excited for, like uh, Vampire Bloodlines 2, I've been waiting a long time to hear more on that game, and I really liked the trailer they showed. Uh, these weren't like big AAA games. They were mostly smaller Indie, also sort of like a double A type titles, right? Games that don't have massive studios working on them. In fact, I think the game that probably looked the most impressive visually was this game Bright Memory Infinite. It started as a pretty typical FPS game. You're like jumping around, shooting guys, but then like this gladiator jumps down and you fight him with a sword and you're doing air combos on him. Sort of had a bullet storm sort of vibe with like uh, pulling guys in the air and killing them kind of crazily. Then the character jumps into like a retro future car and a driving sequence starts. Looked pretty sweet. I'm, I'm very interested in this. And it was confirmed that this game was actually being made by one, count them, one single person, which is nuts, I think, for something that looks like this. But yeah, th these weren't really big games from like notable studios as well as IPs. So I think they weren't going to really get people excited with these titles, no matter how they showed them. And because while many of these games looked good, like quality-wise, I think they were solid, these weren't uh, very visually impressive games. Like I liked the look, right, of uh, the second Extinction game where you're fighting dinosaurs and they're just exploding all over the place. That looked like something I would enjoy playing, but, but that game didn't really look like something that couldn't be running on my current hardware. And for a lot of these games, th that was kind of the case. Uh, they seem to also want to be pushing this smart delivery system with the Xbox family, like super hard in these videos, which is when you buy an Xbox One version of a game, uh, you automatically get the Series X version as well, so you can upgrade or go back and forth to play uh, the best version of the game, which is cool, don't get me wrong, very pro-consumer move, but that meant you're looking largely at things that will be running on both future and modern hardware. 
which makes it even tougher to spot those visual improvements, uh, the stuff that couldn't be done on like a Xbox One or PS4. And you combine that with so much of this footage being more cinematics with quick gameplay cuts, and it's like, you're making it hard for people to see stuff to get excited about with this new system. Like, you're making it more difficult. Like, here's something I would have done, and I've talked a bit about this example before. Probably the biggest game that's confirmed to be coming this year right now for all platforms is Cyberpunk 2077, which also looks like it's going to be a technically very impressive game. What I would do is like you know, five to six minutes of new gameplay, but specifically, and I can, I can kind of see the hesitation because you don't want to make your current platform look inferior, but I mean, let's be real. You're not really selling Xboxes right now anyway. So I would show comparisons like, Here's what the game looks like on Xbox One X, which is the most powerful console out there. Be like, yeah, it still looks really good, and then go, but here's what it's going to look like on Series X in true 4K with like the ray tracing, all those other fancy bells and whistles, and that way you can demonstrate just how much better it's going to look on Series X. Uh, you can show off like the load times with the new SSDs, to again demonstrate how much faster loads are going to be because that's like another thing they talked a lot in this presentation about load times and i know they've shown it elsewhere but it's like if you're going to talk about it you should show it you know show don't tell this was a moment where you had a huge audience tons of eyes on you and your event this was your first big sales pitch for your new system and you could have done it so much better guys and the reason this is a big issue is, as we've talked about this entire generation, the Xbox is by far the platform with the least amount of hype behind it right now. This whole generation was honestly pretty laughable for them. They stumbled hard out of the blocks with uh, uh, focusing on Kinect and that crap. And while they did some things to recover, uh, not having a strong, even decent, I'd say, first party games lineup really screwed them over hard this gen. And now, this is their chance at a fresh start. Uh, when a new console generation starts, everything can change almost instantly. But this is how you chose to kick things off? Like, come on, guys. They do have another event scheduled for July where they said they are going to be focused on their first-party lineup. I think it's likely we'll see some big third-party games in there as well. And maybe that will be more of the showcase people wanted. But then it's like, you should have started with that. I just, I don't think it makes sense, given the position Microsoft is in, to do anything but put your best foot forward. This event almost kind of felt like uh, they just wanted to get out in front of Sony and the PlayStation 5, who have been very quiet lately, but it's pretty inevitable that they'll show something relatively soon. And if they end up showing stuff next, like if Sony goes before Xbox's next showcase, I think it's going to be very easy for them to top this event and maintain their strong lead in terms of hype heading into the next generation, which Microsoft really can't afford to just give to them already this early. Anyway, with that, this video is a wrap. Let me know your thoughts on this big Series X gameplay reveal in the comments. What did you think of the show overall? Uh, did any games catch your interest? And did it affect your feelings towards the Series X and PlayStation 5 as we head closer to launch? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of the Xbox Series X gameplay reveal. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and if you want to keep the conversation going, hit me up on Twitter, at Johnny Zakari, and join my Discord, Shy Guy and Friends. Link to both in the description below, and as always, thanks for watching.